What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Day One Radio right here on Live Hip Hop Daily. I'm Maurice Garland. As always, I'm joined by my man, Brandon Peters. Brandon LSK is what they call him. What's going on, man? Man, maintaining, man. Every every week, I feel like it's the same answer. It's been a lot going on, I think, in, in, in people's personal lives, business, whatever. Yeah. And there's a lot going on in the world. You know, every now and again, we like to hit y'all with one of the uh, one of the shows where we don't have a guest so we could just chop it up about things or whatnot. And this is one of them shows, man. I don't I have no idea where we should start because I feel like every two days it's a a story that just takes over the news feed, takes over T V as well. Yeah, like yeah, we're dip like, you know, we we we've been in a twenty four hour news cycle for many years now, but it's like you know, we are actually really, really in one because everybody's on media down here 24 hours a day because we all at the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I guess we we can we can kick it off with the elephant in the room, bro. The uh, uh, Mr. West, mm-hmm. Mr. Kanye, West, Mr. West. In, yeah, in South Carolina had a a rally. I don't know why you would have a rally when you say you're not running for president, but whatever. And he's not even on the ballot, and but that doesn't mean anything if you voted before, which he hasn't, according to him. You can uh you can write anyone in that you want to write in for, for president or virtually any office. So yeah, man. Uh you asked me earlier in the email had I watched the entire uh rally and I, I had not, admittedly, I had seen clips here and there. So I, I sat down and, and watched as much of it as I could. The audio got a little iffy. Yeah, you know, cause I, I, I mean, how can I say this? I didn't, I was not interested in watching the video, but oh, I did, I. but I did at least want to watch it if I was going to sit here and have things to say about it. And one, I don't like, I, I'm never going to be interested in hearing Kanye West talk for 45 minutes. One and two, <laughs> I yeah, I couldn't do it with like just the the shoddy audio and everything, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you could try to watch clips here and there from all of the, you know, many dozens of cell phones that was there, you know what I'm saying? But there was no like good, just like straight up hardwired recording to really like, you know, hear exactly what dude was talking about. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I feel like even from the clips, we got the gist of it. It's not like he provided a lot of context for the hot mm-hmm. button topics that everybody was upset about or de- discussing or debating. I mean, it, it was kind of like, just like a stream of consciousness. To me, it felt like a mix of what he really wanted to say and saying shit that he knew people wanted to hear mm-hmm. uh, put together. But it's, I mean, I think we both feel like, I don't know who, well, I'm not gonna say that. I feel like the danger in him doing these things is that there are people who still listen to what he has to say and they take it as like a hundred percent fact. Damn. See, that's the thing that I was like not really aware of. You know, see, I, I was I'm like obviously you still got people that are fans of the things that this man produces, whether it's the music or the shoes, you know what I'm saying? But as far as like him just still having like these disciples out here, where it's like they out here really listening to every word that this man had to say on the, you know, I'm bipolar, it's great album. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, <laughs> and, you know, all these other things, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I didn't know he still had people's ears like that. I knew he still had influences because of like all the years of work and contributions that he's made. But I did not know that there were still people out there like, hell, like the, even the folks that did show up, like, oh, wow, I'm going to a rally in South Carolina to hear what this man's talking about. I did not know that he still had folks, you know, like that i think it's i mean i think it's a mix of of both uh i feel like you have people put it to you like this if you can spend money on shoes on clothes and stream this man stuff you are somewhat influenced it ain't that much separating the mm-hmm. art from the artist yeah you know what i mean like because them shoes ain't cheap the clothes ain't cheap and the music hasn't been good in a while so if you oh, going out of your way to convince me that some real marginal music is actually good, which several people have, I'm like, come on, bro. Like, people are still listening to this dude. 
particularly there's so many, I'm going to say young people. It's still people like in their 20s that are listening to this cat. And it's just like, come on, man. I mean, our, a friend of the show, one of my homeboys, Glasses Malone, been going on and on on Twitter about how he supports Kanye West. I'm just like, yeah. and Glasses, if you yeah. do not follow G Malone, <laughs> he's going to say some wild shit. But there's conviction behind it. He really yeah. means the shit he's saying. He yeah, ain't just yeah. saying it for attention at all. That's not even his personality. So it's it's people out there. My thing is this, bro. As a black man <laughs> in America, in any country, you cannot come out and A, say something that's not factual, and B, say something that's insulting about Harriet Tubman and expect not to get completely ridiculed so about that particular statement right do i want to hear that from him no because you know the thing he said the, like the thing about dude that you know why i do tune him out is like he's one of those cats that reminds me of the person that always has something to say but can never or will never tell you where they read it from or where they learned it at it, it just kind of just spews out you're like ah oh, so where'd you hear that at because i'm interested in how you arrived at that point like, ah, nah, don't worry about it listen, listen to me but like about that particular statement when i heard it come out of his mouth like of course you know i was like oh shit but then it's like you know part of me was like well i mean if you really unpack it is it a bold face lie could he had also been saying that okay harriet tubman freed slaves and did not empower them into becoming entrepreneurs in, on top of being freed men. Was he, was he trying to say, you know, he got, she, she got them free and they went on to become freed men that worked for white people. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so you got to add some context. How many black owned businesses was it during slavery in America? Absolutely zero very very few extremely few like less than one percent of one percent mm -hmm. so if you are working whether they were sharecropping whether they had odd jobs whatever if you are working in america you're going to be working for white people so you have to go back to the point at that time mm -hmm. or working for yourself and you have to get to that point if you come out of slavery and have absolutely nothing then it's gonna take a minute to build up to having your own business. So it's it's the same thing with the with the um with the slavery was a choice comment that he made on TMZ. And mm -hmm. it's like, fam, you are too big of a personality and too powerful of a voice to just be saying dumb shit for the sake of saying it, or be saying hot takes for the sake of saying it. Like it makes zero sense because it comes across like you're trying to talk shit about Harriet Tubman or you're trying to diminish the value that she had and her risking her life to free right. a ton of slaves. Right. And, and that's the reason why, like, I was really hoping that I could get through that terrible footage of him talking because I was like, <laughs> you know, it, it cuts off when the old girl is like, oh, we about to leave right now. You know what I'm saying? Well, so I like, saw another one and he, like, immediately went from that after the booze or whatever to another topic and i believe what he was trying because what it started off with his deal with adidas and i believe he has a hundred percent ownership in easy brand or whatever it's a collaboration or a partnership more so than an equity deal or whatever who knows what right. the real paperwork is uh but i mean i to me i don't know if that's true because if adidas is worth 60 some odd billion largely because of the Yeezy brand, and right. he's only worth 1.5, then clearly they're making more money off the shoes than he is. Oh yeah, yeah. So I don't know how that works with 100% ownership. I guess that just means you can walk when you want to walk, but the margins are not the same. Yeah, like you probably walk when you want to walk, you know, you could probably take the name somewhere else, like say if you right. want to, you know, switch production over to, you know, Nike or you know K Swiss or something, you know, saying he could like you know, I can hear like that's basically what he's doing when he's going to Gap, ain't it? Like he's using the Yeezy name still, I believe, you know, what I'm saying so that might be what it means. Like he has ownership of like yeah. the intellectual property and stuff like that. 
for sure. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. He he's doing quite well, especially versus the deal he had at Nike or Louis yeah. Vuitton previous to that. For sure, more power to him. Kudos. The one good thing that I can see in our community, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that I believe is a benefit of Trump getting in office and everything that's going on because of that is that we no longer give motherfuckers passes because they rich. Oh, no. Remember for the longest, it was like, yeah, he killed 23 people, but he balling though. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, We're not it, doing it, that. Yeah. It reminds me of the um a, a Charles a Charles Barkley quote that I remember him saying like year, a long long ass time ago around the time like where he said something he was in the news for something controversial that he said and he was saying you know like yeah man if a homeless person says something crazy they crazy you know what I'm saying if a person with money said oh he just this 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 just his opinion you know yeah. what I'm saying <laughs> and again yeah, you're right like fo folks are definitely you know you know holding feet to the fire no matter you know how much money you got in the bank they're like they're like bro I need some receipts or hey, man, you just on some bullshit right now. Yeah, and I, I find it amazing that he is the first black man that I have ever seen in my lifetime who is who gets the mental health excuse. Hmm. I've never heard of anybody black, especially somebody black and famous, doing some wild shit, saying some wild shit, and instead of condemning them or checking them, we could roll to the mental health excuse. Well, could it be because Not excuse, like, but you could, know. Yeah, yeah, but like could it be because maybe he and I don't know if this was savviness on his part or just, you know, naiveness on his part, but like he he put it out there that, that that's what's up with him. You know what I'm saying? He 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 put he put it out there. Like, hey, like, so like there's no secrets as to like why, why is this man doing this? Why is he saying like he put it out there? Like he's letting you know, hey. I got hospitalized. I got institutionalized. I was on these meds and now I'm diagnosed with this. Whereas like, you know, with other black celebrities, whereas like, you know, when we would notice, you know, erratic behavior, you know, usually the only thing that we'd be connected to that was drug use. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody was talking about anxiety, you know, depression, or even, you know, the shirt that you're rocking that, you know, our homie made, you know what I'm saying? Post-traumatic stress syndrome. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, he actually put it out there like, hey, this is what's up. So I think that's why people are giving him that quote unquote pass yeah. because they're like, okay, we're aware of this because you told us this. You ain't just out, you know, getting hit by cars, smoking crack. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't. You know? <laughs> the, the, the thing of him saying that he, he didn't say he was addicted to Percocet, but he kind of did during that thing. That was interesting that, that he put that out there. I, it would be awesome, like, because I, I, I respect him being brave and mm -hmm. saying, you know, what's on his mind. Obviously, you know, he, there, there is some kind of creative genius in there, but it's also some, some other stuff going on. My thing is, bro, and I, I'm not going to put it to a race thing, but I, I feel like if he had a woman in his life that would check him and truly had his back, and also people in his life that did, I think it would be a little different because I, you know, whatchamacallit, when Ryan Fest was on the show and he was like, he was going to see him and this was one of the, you know, earlier episodes and shortly after that, he was like, bro, it's gone. Like, it's nothing I can do. And then they reconciled or whatever. But even, I, I mean, I, I have, me and I have a mutual friend, somebody that's close to Ye, that you know we're we're pretty tight, been tight for probably like the last ten years or so. Who after the TMZ thing, I hit this person up and was like, "Yo, what's up with your man?" And it was like an automatic defense of him. And I'm just like, "Fam, some shit is indefensible." Hmm. We all got people we love who ain't shit. Hmm. That don't mean we don't love them. Yeah, but they ain't shit. Like it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like we, it's certain things like we can't defend. Like I feel like he's been enabled for so long because he feeds so many people mm -hmm. that people just let a ton of shit ride and they just act like it's cool. And this shit ain't gonna end well if it's if he doesn't find some kind of way 
to to some kind of sanity or or a, a peaceful place. Do you think it's a thing? Like I know you, you said it's a thing where you know you you think he's um being enabled by a lot of people because he's feeding a lot of people. Not now. I don't know everybody in his inner circle, but you know, based off of you know the interviews and things I've read of his, where he brags about how great his friend group is, whether it's, oh man, I got a friend that works at this architecture firm that's building my dome in Wyoming, or this artist that has won all these awards and built arenas in Australia, or, you know, I got my man's put on Virgil, with, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it seems like he has some well-to-do people surrounding him. So it's like, who is who like who would be these enablers now, now to the point about having the woman in his life like granted i don't follow kim kardashian on social media i don't keep up with her at all but it's like I, I i i don't think that this man is getting home cooked meals you know what i'm saying which plays a <laughs> vital role in a, any married man's sanity out this bitch you know what i'm saying so it's like i don't i don't like i, I don't think if i went on kim kardashian instagram page i was gonna be seeing you know home cooked meals and shit you know what i'm saying one one thing you gotta also think about bro it's a lot of rich lames out there hmm. like one of my homeboys had a brilliant idea and i'm not gonna put too much out of there because i don't think he's I, I think he's still gonna do it uh but he the the overall breakdown was like fam you have so many people that have money that work in tech or work in whatever field that are just completely game goofy. They can't get girls. They can't even get in the dope clubs. So having Kanye West in your circle, even if you got bread, takes you to another level in life. Hmm. It may not help you in the boardroom, but it's going to help you in real life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And everybody, you know, who, who wouldn't want that? I'm like, oh, you try to talk to a girl and you don't even know how to dress, but you got millions in the bank. He'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm going over to my friend Kanye's house. That changes the whole situation because mm. she's thinking Kanye West, the rap star, Jay-Z, the Kardashians, yada, yada, yada. Not so lame, no-name ass that's yeah. the, that has a startup mm. that just, you know, got a valuation of $400 million. Like, that don't matter. Mm. She just probably fucked the second leading scorer on the Lakers three months ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. that don't matter to her. At the end of the day, so yeah, that helps. It ain't to me the enabling just ain't about the bread and him taking care of people. It's also about the social status that he brings to these people that otherwise we wouldn't have known. Now, to add on to this conversation about do so, one reason that you know I well I, I never really got worked up by outlandish comments he's been making over the last fifteen years. You know what I'm saying? I never really just got worked up like, oh man, he said that I can't believe that. But it's like. I did notice that pretty much outside of the first time he said some craziness, like with the whole, well, great, I agreed with the whole, you know, George Bush don't care about black people yeah. thing. Outside of that statement, it's hard to remember a time where he came out and said something outlandish and didn't damn near immediately sell something. It seems like every time he comes out to say something, there's either an album on the way, a new Yeezy colorway on the way, some other kind of announcement on the way. Like, it's never just, hey, man, you know, I woke up thinking about this, and here it is. It's always say this, and then weeks, maybe a month later, boom, product comes out. So do you think that all of this is a yet another rollout? Because, I mean, I can't think that it's a coincidence that this man was also just on the cover of GQ magazine last month. And granted, the magazine game has definitely changed, but nobody's just putting anybody on the magazine cover for no reason that's not connected to something that's about to happen. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Uh, and you, I mean, the Donda album is supposed to drop this week. So a uh, 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 track listing came out, he erased it. And then he put up a track listing again that I, so I'm assuming it's dropping Friday. Who knows? This is Kanye. But I also feel like there are probably people in his circle who capitalize off of these things. Like, hey, he in the news, let's go ahead and push the button on this. Hmm. You know what I mean? So who knows? I I have given, I give it these days Kanye albums one listen through. <laughs> cause I'm like, I hope he comes back to where he was. Yeah. It ain't gonna happen. It's like, cause I was like, the, I, I, like I said, like, you know, anybody that's been listening to this show knows that I've been tuning Buddy out for a while now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
But it's like, I did enjoy the gospel album that did not have him on it. You know what I'm saying? When it was just the yeah. choir singing, that was I dope. Didn't listen to it. I, I, I didn't like that, now that was the the, the, the the one with the choir is just the choir singing, yeah. not the one with him rapping on it. Yeah, not, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, know, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. But yeah, like, you know, like I've tuned Buddy out for a while because it's like, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's an answer. I feel like we're living in a time right now where it's going to be a lot of people saying wild shit just to cut through the clutter. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, to break through the noise. And I feel like that's part of his strategy as well. But like I said, th this is not going to end well if, you know, something doesn't change. There has to but be see, some kind of balance. And, and this is the thing as well. So, like, you know, we were talking about the whole, like, mental health aspect. So, you know, like, I, I have a history with, with mental health issues and stuff like that. So, one thing I do know is you got to be the person that decides, hey, I want some help with something or I need some help with something. Yeah. So when I hear people, you know, like you said, like giving him the pass, quote unquote, like, oh, man, he needs help. Let's not make fun of him. He needs help. It's not going to end well. It's like I hear that, but I'm also seeing and hearing this man explicitly, whether it be through him or his wife saying, hey, I ain't taking the medicine. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, now, now you're turning away to help. We just talked about how much money this man makes and how much he's worth. So you have access to resources to get oh, different kinds of help, not even just medical. You know what I'm saying? Like you have resources to get the best kind of help available and you're still not taking advantage of that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, when I, when I see that, that's when I'm also like, okay, hold up now, bro. You coming out here saying that you're these, this, 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 that. You have the resources, like, and then you get the, you, you do whatever, then you decide, oh, no, I'm not doing that because it takes away from this, 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 this. Like, you know, like, now, that's that's where he kind of loses me at. You know what I'm saying? Because, granted, nobody wants to be on no damn pills. That pill shit, nah, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? But right. when you're, like, when it's, like, when I, I see him as a man, not only a, as a man of extreme means, but, like, when you have those means, you also have resources. You know what I'm saying? You you can get Ayanla, Ayanla's teacher. You know what I'm saying? You, you can get every damn body. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> with this, this, with this. this is what I think, though. I honestly, and I'm with you on the drug thing. Like, I, you know, we've talked about this before. I wholeheartedly believe in therapy, self-care, all of that stuff. My thing is this. I honestly feel like moving to Wyoming was probably a form of him trying to get hmm. better. Get okay. away from the drama, getting away from that whole LA shit, probably getting away from his wife and her family, or mm, at least her family mm, to mm, an extent. I feel mm, like that's part of it mm. for sure. But again, it's all about balance because you yeah. cannot, especially when you're that famous, not face things. You mm. can't not deal with things. Like it's, that's just not how life works. And you know, I, I think in certain areas, he has good intentions. I'm talking about, he should be on the board of Gap and of Adidas, you just signed with Gap. Slow your roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, buddy, now. <laughs> there's, there's no reason that Pharrell and Kanye should not be on the board of Adidas. They have kept the lights on at that brand. And I honestly feel like I was having this, this conversation uh, online earlier um, with Adidas. You know, you and I had talked offline about how you know, there have been employees that they came out, black employees saying how bad it was at Adidas. Same thing with Nike, both Portland companies or whatever. I believe there's even a black and Nike hashtag or Instagram account. I think yeah, the there, there was, they, they, it, it, it got taken down. Really? Yeah, it, and Nike says, no, we didn't have nothing to do with that. But yeah, the, the, the black and Nike, the, the official one, the original yeah. one got taken down. I grant there's one floating out there that's like black at Nike hash, uh, like underscore now, you know what I'm saying? But no, like the oh, one one, oh, yes. it got taken down. And everybody's kind of like looking at Nike like, hey, did y'all pull some strings? They're like, no, no. Because they, they, I mean, they acknowledged it. They acknowledged it. They, they, we knew it existed, but hey, we did not have anything to do with it getting taken Bro, down. I didn't know that. That's <laughs> yeah. super bogus. Yeah. <laughs> You know me, brother. I'm I'm one of the people. If you ain't fucking with black people as a corporation, brand, artist, whatever, I'm like fuck you. <laughs> I'm not spending a dime on you. Not giving none of my cultural cachet, nothing to what you do. Um, I I just feel like this, bro. 
these corporations, whether it be Nike, Adidas, whoever, or microcosms of America, hmm. that's just what it is. Like, there's going to be some good things. There's going to be some bad things. I was actually shocked to find out that Nike's uh, employment is 22% black. No, I truly doubt that the majority of that is on a corporate level. I'm yeah. sure it's at a lot of stores, but that surprised the hell out of me. I just feel like this. We are in a position right now where we need to be really putting the clamps, putting the super pressure on all these companies to do right by our people and do right by our community, especially companies that we have pretty much spent billions of dollars with over the years. Yeah, like we definitely keep these places a lot because like even when um when uh people were acting mad about the Kaepernick commercial when that dropped. Yeah. And all these white folk went burning their Nikes and you're like, I was like, I was laughing because like I was looking at the Nikes, they were burning, like, man, them shit's trash anyway. Like, you know, it ain't like they were burning some some Jordans or right. hell, even some KDs or Kyrie's. They keep burning like random out. Outlet oh, ball oh, shit. Nikes. <laughs> it's yeah. like, man, nobody don't care about that. Now let us go out here and decide, hey, we ain't buying the new Jordans. We ain't buying the new LeBrons. We ain't buying the new KDs, Kyrie's, PG3s, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's when you'll, that's when, you know, you'll, you'll see some, some movement. <laughs> For sure. I, I also feel like this, bro, like we have to value ourselves more um, in, in corporate America. I, I feel like there are so many black folks that are just happy to have that job hmm. and not understanding that we've been keeping the lights on forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like our talents, our minds, our ideas, our hustle, our hard work, virtually every company in this country, whether they employ us or whether they're reaping the benefits from our free labor, for four almost 500 years right <laughs> been in the light zone you go to any company that's exercising any kind of dope creativity i guarantee you as somebody black that's fueling a lot of those oh, ideas definitely, definitely. and we got to understand that and we also have to understand that that doesn't make us special because they will get rid of your ass in a minute look at nick cannon yeah nick been holding it down for viacom forever on various networks as an executive and as a host and out of there. So, so about, about this. Hold on. Let me, let me finish the point. Yeah. 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 So I, I feel like we have to understand that this generating income for corporations coming up with amazing ideas that come to fruition and increase market share for corporations does not guarantee you a promotion and it damn sure the guarantee doesn't guarantee that you'll be able to keep that job long term if you black, right. period. That's just what it is. And I, I feel like we need to make, we need to understand that we need to value ourselves. We need to put the pressure on these corporations. And we also need to start bringing some of these brilliant ideas to our own communities and bankrolling them ourselves and having ownership. Right, and speaking of, you know, like granted, I just found out about this company do the homie be short this weekend, but shit, I'm, I'm looking at this. You heard that sneaker company, Rock Deep, the black owned sneaker yeah, company. You told them to me before. Yeah, I was like, shit, man, I'm like, shit. They, they, they kind of got some low key heat, some of us. So it's like, yeah, yeah that's a prime do. example. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, the designers, the marketers, you know what I'm saying? There's black, there's already black owned sneaker companies out there that, Kosher. you know. Shout out to Kosher. They got right. a black owned sneaker company here in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? So we definitely hop behind us. So, like, I want to speak on Nick Cannon very, very, very briefly because, like, there's a lot of chambers to unlock if you get yeah, and I, and I feel like everything that probably needs to be said has been said. Is it? But, like, this, this is my... So, not a fan of censorship. I am a promoter of filtering to a degree, though. So, it's like I say, I say that to say this. So, I heard what was said. I mean... That's the, whoever's offended, they're just very sensitive. I'll say that, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, you have the platform, right? You have your separate platform, your name on it. It's like, and I've seen episodes with everybody from, you know, Tariq Nasheed, everybody, you didn't have folks in there talking that shit. What's up? You know what I'm saying? But, and, and, I'm, and I'm damn near joking when I say this, but it's like, 
I don't know, bro. Like some 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 things probably don't need to be said out loud on Front Street all the time. You know what I'm saying? Some things, knowing the repercussions of them, and and having the balance, like if it's worth it or not. Some things can be closed door conversations. So how do I want to word this? So I'll get direct to the point. So it's like I've just noticed that <laughs> over the years. And God bless them, you know what I'm saying? Over the years, it's like every time somebody sits next to Professor Griff, they get fired. You know what I'm saying? Or he gets fired. <laughs> right. And it's like, it's like, now you gotta be a motherfucker to get fired out of goddamn public enemy, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I I just I just, I just noticed that I could be wrong, but it's like, God damn, because soon as I heard about it, it's like. Oh my nigga, you asking for it, bro? Like why? Like why? Why? Like why? If, are you even like not saying that Progressive Griff is not a person worth having a conversation with? But it's like, what is the end goal of you, Mister MTV Wilding Out, NBC America's Got Talent, sitting down having a conversation with Professor Griff? Right. Of it's kind of it's, it's like what what is a conversation from Griff going to bring to your audience? Right, right, right. It's like, it's like now, if it was a situation that, that conversations that you've already had with KRS-One, yeah. with Tariq Nashi, with whomever else you've had on there who is a black nationalist, pan-Africanist, whatever, what is he going to bring to the table that those people have not already brought to right, the table? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It's not like he was having like you know, a bunch of just real safe guests for hella long, and then was like, "Bam, Professor Griff." Right, you know, it's, right. It's, it's been headed there, but Griff is—he's a wild card. Right. That's why I was just like, like "Bruh," you yeah. know, like, <laughs> like, like, what is it really like? Like I said, like, like I said, God bless that man, but it's like, it's like whoever says we're gonna have a sit down with this dude, and they got something to lose, they lose it. So it's like that. What is it really worth? I mean, I can see if it was a thing where, which I doubt it would happen. I mean, hell, it maybe, maybe happen. Maybe could happen if you want to play the game like that. Like, if I can see if it was a thing where it's like, all right, I got Griff sitting on my left, and now I got this rabbi that I just had on here, you know what I'm saying, to kind of do my apology tour with. I'm going to have both of y'all talk on the show at the same time. That would that, be, I'm not even going to say that would be the safe play. That would be the smart play. Yeah, yeah. But, I feel like he had pushed the envelope so much that he probably thought he was good. Mm, mm. Because if you look at it, like, dude, Nick Cannon don't bite his tongue. No, he don't. He don't. That's why I was like, damn, like, why are they acting up now? And I was like, oh, I know they're acting up now because of this X factor. It ain't even. <laughs> I guess not, maybe like Professor Griff in that community is like, the 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 breaking point. Like, yeah, yeah that was cool, but nah, we come on, man, we can't fuck with Griff. You know what I mean? And there has been a long history between Pro Progressor Griff, Professor Griff, and the Jewish community dating back to was that was it a Spin interview or a Rolling Stone interview? Yeah, that that's what I'm saying. It's like you know, <laughs> this is, we're talking early '90s, right? Right. This is, yeah. like, this is not a like, that man is a red circle on yeah, somebody's yeah, bulletin yeah. board. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I, but I, I thought it was that, you know, dope that Nick kept his job at uh, the NBC joint, The Mad Singer, which is one of the top shows on TV. But, bro, you got to think, man. Like, we talking going back to ownership. Like, he was like, he put up his own money to make Wild and Out and, and ended up selling it in. But I'm like, fam, if that's the case, that paperwork got to be right. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like that paperwork got to be right and you got to have ownership. It's not enough to be like, oh, I did this or I did that. Like I said, we've been keeping the lights on at these companies forever. It's not enough yeah, to have the number one show. Because they have to put up your money. If right. that shit is not in black and white on them contracts, it don't matter. Yeah, because I can't even really tell you another name of a television show on MTV right now. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And it's like, I wasn't even like a, a loyal wild and out watcher like that. Like the first couple seasons, I used to watch the hell out of it. But it's like, that, that, that show played Bro. a role in saving the network if it didn't do it, you know, by itself. You know what I'm saying? Bro, me and Z was in Miami for Valentine's Day, walking down the street. 
there's a wild and out restaurant my dude like mm. i had to walk in there like what <laughs> like, wow. like who knew i knew they was doing tours had no they have restaurants they have franchised this thing to the nth degree so when he's talking about it's a billion dollar franchise it is yeah. you know what i'm saying like it's a big deal for sure uh speaking and, of and, and, and that's the thing too like like they that offended they 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 that offended or want to show they nuts that much where it's like we cutting all that off this is one of the, no they own it they probably not cutting it come on bro you know it's a plan that's like getting in an argument with your significant other over something you know is nothing because you want to go out by yourself like oh man you yeah, didn't so take out that, the that, trash. That, that, I'm that, thinking this. That, 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 that also makes it interesting because it's like, you know, in the climate that we're in, like, who is going to be the person to take that job? To be like, okay, I'll be the host of Wild and Out now. Yeah, or, hey, sure. you know, I'll, I'll, I got love for Nick, but I'm going to continue to do my bits yeah, on there. You know what I'm saying? Some out-ass niggas out here, they'll take that job in a heartbeat. You also got to think, bro, you ain't finna have hella, like, racist white people losing their jobs because they're posting online doing racist shit and they ain't gonna come for somebody black come mm. on man mm. that ain't how it works this is america mm. somebody gonna get got <laughs> believe me like it's, it's got to be a balance somebody gonna get got the streets is watching and big brother <laughs> is at the end of the day uh before we get up out of here bro we we right around the corner from nba season kicking off we've discussed it before whether we thought they should start or not and they in the bubble they said as of july the july 13th test nobody came back with negative tests your boy atl's on dwight howard out there like a cat without a mask on <laughs> look at getting getting snitched on on the 800 hotline oh bro they are snitch in bro they are snitching on their <laughs> white howard took the phone. but anyway <laughs> You know, so I'm like, I, I'm, I'm curious to see what happens. I, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm curious. To, I wonder why LeBron, uh, more so than Anthony Davis, why he decided not to have one of the slogans on, on his. Oh journey. well, from what I've read, it's because you know the NBA they approve, they have to approve the slogans. They didn't just let you just pick what you yeah, want yeah. to say because a lot of the players. They were going to put like names of people, like where there was like, you know, Brianna said they're going to put names on their jersey. So that the NBA approved like 20th to 30th. And from what I read, Braun and others were just kind of like, well, I don't want, I don't like, I don't want to wear none of those. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. not what I would have put on there. So I'll just rock with my name. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, so I can, that's what I thought. I can understand that. Um, speaking of the names, I thought it was dope. I don't know if you saw Jeremy Grant. And uh, Tobias Harris both were during their press conferences yeah. basically answered every question with "Yeah, but y'all need to go ahead and and, and arrest and convict Breonna Taylor's killers." I thought that was dope. Yeah, matter of fact, he he oh. dropped he dropped the uh dude's name, the uh oh, <laughs> the attorney general, sell out ass attorney general, <laughs> uh, Clarence Thomas the second huh. out there in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, yeah, I I mean I, I thought that was dope. Uh, for sure, because, you know, that was a whole conversation about is this going to stop the momentum of of the players' work that they were doing, or is this even going to provide a distraction from people doing the work out in the community? And I and I feel like it's dope that a lot of these folks are, are, are stepping out, like Malcolm Brogdon started a social justice reform organization since he's been in the bubble, which is dope. And, you know, Malcolm Brogdon, I believe his mom is a professor at Morehouse, mm -hmm. So he, he comes from that that thought process, you know what I mean? And uh, and then Jeru Holiday and his wife, who plays professional soccer, they donated like $5.3 million to Black-owned businesses that have been affected by COVID, as well as, you know, some of the organizations that I guess are under the BLM, whatever. Um, and I think even Dwight Howard. Uh, Dwight Howard donated the rest of his salary for the year to an organization. Patty Mills from the from the um, Spurs. I was going to say the Supersonics. We ain't had the Supersonics. <laughs> it was an S team dedicated uh, some bread as well. So I I'm happy to see these brothers stepping up, man, and 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 doing that. It's hella WNBA players that are like, we ain't playing. 
And oh, yeah. one of the one of the sisters, forgive me for not remembering her name, Converse stepped up because she signed at them and was like, we're going to pay her salary. So that's ill, man. I, I feel like, bro, this is a time, like I said, this is the time to put pressure on these corporations. This is also not the time to be caught on the wrong side of history mm-hmm. because it's a lot of people that are. Like, I, I don't remember who it was, but I saw a tweet or a post online that was said something along the lines of, uh, yeah, I, I see we all, you know, most of a lot of us say we descendants of slaves, but it's clear that some of y'all are descendants of the house Negro that mm. was telling on the rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth, because a lot of these fools yeah. is not on the right side of history. And I see you. I'll be paying attention. I'm taking notes. Yeah. So I know who really with the shit and who not <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day. But I, I can't lie, man. I'm looking forward to watching some hoop. I have watched a little bit of baseball. I, I mean, as always, I, the NBA is the most forward thinking of all the organizations. Like, they really got this shit making sense mm-hmm. in, a, in a world that doesn't make sense. Like, you got to commend Adam Silver and his team because they got to work. Because I, I did not think we was going to have no season at right. all at all so yeah i'm gonna watch it you gonna watch neither one of our teams are in it <laughs> right yeah, that's what i was like yeah i mean i ain't, I ain't watching I, I was already offended by the, the way they even set it up it's like so y'all just gonna not have all the teams come back then you're gonna rig it to have zion in there you know what i'm saying it's like they ain't like like i was already offended by the way they even organized it then on top of that being like, damn man, why the fuck we playing basketball right now? You know, this I, I don't I don't know how much I'm gonna be watching. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm boycotting you know, like, but I don't, I don't I don't I don't know how much I'm gonna be watching. I, I'm a, I'm gonna watch, bro. I'm I'm gonna definitely watch. I may wait till the playoffs, but I'm gonna watch and see what's what, man. But it's it's cool. I I I have to say, um, I and forgive me for for my level of ignorance, but I feel like we talked about it. Um, and I know I talked about it pretty passionately. Um, when Nia Wilson was murdered. Uh, by that, that I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say nothing crazy, by that man on the bar train in Oakland last year. But um, I'm not sure if it was a jury trial or if it was just the judge deciding. But this past week, I want to say last Saturday, he was uh, found guilty and convicted uh, of murder without possibility of parole. Good. So, you know, we complain a lot about the justice system or the injustice system when it comes to us. But I, I'm happy that the right thing was done in that situation because that dude don't never need to see the light of day. And no. whatever happens to him in prison is what happens to him. He deserves it. Straight up. Well, yeah, man. Anything else before we get up out of here? No, nah, man. I think we're good, man. All right. For sure. For sure. We appreciate y'all listening. Appreciate y'all watching, man. Make sure that you uh, follow us on Day One Radio. Make sure that you go back and listen to the last few episodes. I know we haven't been bringing you the, the celebrity stuff that y'all are used to, but these are necessary and more important than a lot of the other content that we've put out. So make sure that y'all support for sure. And uh, we'll see you next week with another dope show. Peace. Peace.